Creating layouts that look and behave the way we want them to largely comes down to choosing the right sizing modes for each element. As you know, we have several to choose from, and each has its own unique purpose, depending on how static or flexible we want things to be. Earlier in this chapter, we unpacked fill and fit content sizing, but there's also a time and place to use fixed, relative, and viewport sizing. Whether we want our elements to remain at a specific size, scale with our layout, or even respond to a viewer's screen size, we've got options to get the job done. So let's dive a bit deeper into how these next three sizing modes work and when to use each one. First, let's take a look at fixed sizing. When you drew your very first frame on the canvas and manually played around with its height and width, you were using fixed sizing. It lets us set a specific pixel value for a layer that we want to start at that size and stay at that size. It won't grow or shrink with its parent, children, or siblings. There are just a couple exceptions to that. One we actually looked at in the lesson on absolute positioning, where pinning two opposite sides will make that dimension grow and shrink with its parent. Another exception is a little trick you can use to lock the proportions or aspect ratio of something like a photo or logo, for example. Let's say I've got a stack of frames with image fills, and I want the width of them to fill their parent, but I want the height to adjust accordingly to keep the proportions of the frame the same at all times. Starting with fixed dimensions, I can make sure that the images are the aspect ratio I want. Then I'll turn on the lock aspect ratio toggle. Now, if I set the width to fill, I've actually locked the fixed value to the fluid value. And now when the parent frame resizes, the fixed value will update dynamically to maintain the aspect ratio. And this will happen in the canvas and on the browser. But those couple exceptions aside, a fixed dimension is going to remain static when things around it resize. So it's safe to say we want to use fixed sizing thoughtfully. It's great for smaller elements like icons, avatar images, and modals. And of course, locking the aspect ratio of media elements. Think of fixed sizing as a way to put things in a protective shell that prevents them from getting resized responsively. But don't worry, we can still adjust fixed elements for different size devices using breakpoints, but we'll get into that later. Unlike fixed sizing, relative sizing allows elements to scale in relation to their parent. We set a percentage of the parent's width or height, and that proportion will be maintained even if the parent changes size. You might be thinking, I thought this was a job for fill sizing. There are a few key differences. First, unlike fill sizing, relative sizing works on layers with any position type, including absolute and fixed. Second, relative sizing ignores sibling layers and doesn't care about available space. You say 50% and it's 50% of the parent, period. And third, relative sizing actually lets us go above 100% in case we want elements to stay larger than its parent by a certain amount. It's perfect for decorative elements in the background or foreground that we'd like to flex in size. Let's look at an example. Here I have a giant oval forming this sort of planetary element at the bottom of this hero section. The width and height are both currently set to fixed. So if I preview this and play with the width of the viewport, nothing changes which means the viewport can get wide enough that the oval drops off the bottom and narrow enough that we don't see much curvature. Back on the canvas, if I switch the width of this from fixed to relative, we now see a value of 160%. Since this layer was 1600 pixels wide and its parent is currently 1000 pixels wide on the canvas, Framer converts the current size relationship into a percentage for us automatically. Now, if we preview this, the oval flexes to remain 160% of the width of its parent, no matter how wide or narrow that is. All right, we've got one last sizing mode to learn, viewport sizing, which in Framer is specific to height. Viewport sizing lets us set a percentage of the height of the viewer's browser window, aka viewport, we want an element to occupy. For instance, here we have a hero section that looks really great when it fills the whole browser. But since we can't predict the height of everyone's browser window, this is a job for viewport sizing. The unit of measurement is VH for viewport height. And one VH equals 1% of the viewport height. So by setting the section's height to 100 VH, we're telling it to fill 
100% of the height of the browser, no matter how tall the window is. Since the nature of viewports is that they vary, we get a little handle on the canvas that we can drag to see exactly how our design will flex in relation to the browser window. But nothing beats checking the preview window. And there we have it, a full screen hero section, no matter what the height of the viewport. Viewport sizing is perfect for full screen sections, just like this one, or any elements that need to resize to accommodate different size browser windows and devices. Once again, we've covered a lot in this lesson, but give yourself a pat on the back because at this point in the course, you've learned all of the sizing and positioning modes. Let's recap. For positioning modes, we have absolute, where we can freely position layers in relation to their parent frame, relative, where the position is determined by the flow of content in a stack or grid, fixed, where the position of a layer is fixed relative to the viewport, and sticky, where a layer switches from relative to fixed when it hits the top of the viewport, then back to relative when it hits the bottom of its parent frame. And for sizing, we have fixed to set a specific pixel size for a layer to remain at, relative to set a layer to a percentage of the size of its parent, fill to determine what fraction of the available space a layer should fill within a stack or grid, fit content, to keep a parent frame snug down around its relative position child layers, and viewport, to set the height of a layer to fill a percentage of the height of the viewer's browser window or display viewport. The more you experiment with these core concepts, the more comfortable you'll become. So revisit the lessons in this chapter. Remember, it's perfectly okay to stumble along the way. Take your time and enjoy the process. I'll see you in the next one.